Hello there, welcome to the video. Today we are doing a what's in my bag for 2023. If you're new here, I do landscape photography and woodland photography. I shoot both digital and analog. And we're going through my bag, what's in it and what gear I'm using. Firstly, the bag itself is a Mindshift bag made by Think Tank. The reason why I got this bag was I used to use a low pro bag but then I bought myself a Mimiya RB67 and all of a sudden that bag felt a bit small. So I wanted a bigger bag and I ended up getting this bag. It's been great. Um, is it better than the Shimoda F-Stop and those kind of bags? I don't know, I haven't tried those. But I do like this bag. So on the side of the bag I do carry a small little water bottle on one side and I carry my tripod on the other side. I like to carry the tripod with the head facing downwards. I feel that helps with weight distribution. The tripod itself, it's a Liu Photo carbon fiber tripod with a leveling base and a geared head on top. It's been great, it's fairly lightweight and uh, it's held up quite well in my usage. Quite happy with this tripod setup. Uh, Took a while to get here. I used to use a Manfrotto tripod and tried some other brands, but I finally settled into this and uh, finally quite happy with it. This is a rare access bag, as most of the camera bags today. If you ever need to put the bag on the ground to access your gear, it's quite good having that rare access as it will keep the back of the bag and your back dry. And this is usually what I pack. I do pack my analog camera, my main shooter, um, and it's this one. This is a Hasselblad 2003 FCW. I always wanted a Hasselblad camera and finally having one. That's just lovely. If you're not familiar with the 2000 series of Hasselblad, it is a continuation from the 500 series. So we are still within that V system of Hasselblad cameras. The difference between this and the old 500 series is that this uses a focal plane shutter instead of a leaf shutter in the lenses. So that means that the later lenses, the F lenses, don't have a leaf shutter instead they rely on the camera's own shutter. Benefits and drawbacks of both ways of doing it. Uh, the main thing with this is it has a shutter speed of 1 2000 of a second. Quite nice. As well as it do half stop shed shutters. Quite useful from time to time. And in my eye this is just a beautiful camera, lovely to handle, fairly lightweight and small. I do have it in this lovely mm, all black which is the professional look of course. As all has black cameras this is a proper system camera so you can replace the lens, the winder, the finder and the back as well as the screen. I use an acute matte screen, so it's a slightly brighter screen with just a cross in the middle. I also have an additional back for the camera. Um, so I have some color film loaded here, some Cinestill 50D actually. And then I have the A12 back on the camera and that's usually loaded with some black and white. Most commonly an FP4. The C12 bags are older and significantly cheaper. They are about half the price versus the A12 bag. And the main difference is you have to line up the first frame using the looking glass on the back of the back. This is a bit easier to load. And that's the main difference. Um, they both work great. When it comes to lenses, I use three lenses. So I have the 8mm F version, and this is the standard lens, the kit lens for this camera. Legendary, wonderful lens. Um, works well, beautifully made, and all that. Uh, F2.8, I believe it is. I do carry two more lenses for this camera, and it's these two lenses. It's the 250mm uh, F5.6, and it's the 50mm F4. The 250 uh, is a slightly longer lens, so this is like a short telephoto lens. Probably one of my favorite focal lengths when it comes to this square format the Hasselblad camera shoot. Uh, this is an older lens, so this is a C lens. Um, works well with the camera. Then we have my most expensive lens. Uh, this is the 50 mm CF lens, F4 I believe it is. Yes, it's F4. 
I don't use this as much. Uh, I'm not a big fan of wide angle shots when it comes to square format. Uh, but when I didn't have this lens, I did miss it. So it's a great addition to my camera bag. And there you go, my setup for the analog photography. I do also often pack a digital camera. Uh, I do usually carry both an analog camera and a digital camera. The reason is I usually only shoot black and white with my analog camera. And then the digital is nice if I ever come across a subject just that just needs color. Um, so I use them in that way. As well as I use the digital camera to film YouTube videos. And I use the X-H2. Now the eagle-eyed viewers of you will notice this is the X-H1. That's because the X-H2 is there filming myself. But the lens is the one I usually pack. This is the 16 to 80 mil. I bought this with the kit with the H2. So that camera, H2 and that lens is the one I usually carry. Lovely pairing, works really well. I really enjoy the H2, it's a great camera. The first camera I really feel I can do it all. I don't miss anything with that camera. Uh, and that lens, 16 to 80, uh, it's a nice compromise lens. It covers all the focal lengths I need, uh, as well as it's fa fairly fast at f4. Uh, for landscape, that works perfectly well. That means I can pack only the camera and one lens and uh, pretty much cover all my photography needs. Just lovely. So that's kind of my setup for digital when I'm packing both analog and digital. I have added a new little addition in the bag. Uh, and it's this one. Uh, it's a new old edition. This is a Samyang 12mm f2 lens, also known as Rokinon. I bought this ages ago when I just got into the Fujifilm system. This used to be my wide angle for photography. Uh, but I since upgraded, I have a wide angle zoom now. Uh, this I pack purely for video. Uh, I found myself a couple times out when it's fairly dark and I feel like the f4 just doesn't really cut it. It's nice to have a bit faster lens available then. So I started packing this and uh, it's fairly lightweight and uh, it works well enough for video. Sometimes I do pack my bag only for digital photography. Uh, what I do then is I pack the H2 with the 16 to 80 and the H1 also get its spot in the bag, so I replace the Hasselblad with the H1. Uh, mostly for filming myself, but also as a backup camera. And I must say the H1 still uh, stacks up quite well today, especially for landscape photography. The main benefits with the H2 is the autofocus and some of the video capabilities. Purely still photography in a landscape setting, uh, the H1 will still work quite well. Um, and I still like this camera, uh, but I do prefer the H2. Um, I'll also pack two additional lenses uh, when I'm out shooting only digital, and it's these two. We have this lens, this is the wide angle zoom, so this is 10 to 24 f4 lens, the first generation. So it's not weather sealed, but I've had it in quite bad weather and stood up quite well against the weather. I don't use it a ton for photography, uh, but I do use it for video quite often. Um, and it's a great lens, it works well. Uh, it's fairly lightweight and uh, for its price point, its weight and uh, quality, it's a great lens. I would buy the Generation 2 for the weather ceiling if I was paying today. I also usually carry this one. This is the 55 to 200 f3.5 to f4.8. Um, and this is really a compromised lens. This isn't the best lens ever. It's fairly good, it's fairly cheap, and mostly important, it's fairly lightweight. It gives a ton of reach without weighing too much. So I keep holding on to this. I do look into the red batch zoom, that f2.8 lens. I think that would be a nice upgrade, but I keep using it just because of the weight. I can't really motivate the cost and the weight gain uh, with the upgrade in the lens, so I stick to this lens for now. And that's my camera setup. I do carry a bit of accessories. 
Uh, firstly, you have a couple of film accessories. I do carry a couple of spare rolls of film. Uh, I mostly shoot Ilford. Uh, this is Delta 400 and I have FB4 that cannot live up here. Uh, nice little addition uh, to my bag is these. These are a plastic container made by Alex. Got them from a site called Photo Index where I order some of my films, a German site. So if you're in the EU, I highly recommend Photo Impex. But then again, if you shoot film, you've surely heard of that site already. But these are great when you uh, finish a roll out in the field, you can uh, put the used roll in this one and it will protect the film. You can squish the film and it, they are also light tight. So that's quite nice. I usually carry one or two or three of those. Um, small little blower, kind of moves around in the bag. I have a cable release that I don't like. Um, but it's the only one I seem to be able to keep hold of. I keep losing the cable release, except this one, so I suppose that's a plus. Uh, the thing I don't like with it is uh, it has this locking mechanism and uh, keeps locking up when I don't want it to. Uh, so when I'm doing like two second exposures, uh, it locks when it isn't supposed to and uh, I fill around with it and ruin the exposure and have to retake it. Uh, so that's why I don't like it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't lose it, so <laughs> it hangs around. I also carry this. Now, another thing I'm not uh, too pleased with, this is a Pentax spot meter. It works well enough, uh, but it's fairly heavy, uh, so I kind of want to replace it. But spot meters are surprisingly expensive, and I can't really motivate the cost to upgrade, so I keep using this one. Uh, I have a couple of filters. Um, First we have the case filter magnetic things. Um, works great, I see a lot of YouTube videos these and uh, they are great. You have these uh, adapter rings you put on the camera and then it's magnetically uh, attached with filters uh, on that. Uh, so that's both a circle polarizer and some NDs. I uh, use those for both digital and analog. I also have this. This is a small little pouch containing some colored filters. I am looking into replacing these, uh, but these are my colored filters currently. So it's uh, green and red and orange, a couple of other colored filters. Uh, and that's for black and white photography. Uh, if you don't know, if you're shooting black and white on film and you want to manipulate the, how color renders in the gray tones, you need color filters. For instance, the red filter will increase contrast as it would light everything in the red spectrum and dark everything in the blue spectrum. So highlight will be a bit lighter and the shadows will be, generally speaking, a bit darker. Um, and then the yellow will do pretty much the same but just not a strong effect. And uh, the green filters, uh, like this one, will lighten up some foliage. So it's a great tool to have. Uh, these haven't really worked that well, uh, so I am looking into replacing them with some better filters. Uh, but I also do have in that pouch, these, these are adapters from a Hasselblad camera. If you don't know, the Hasselblad camera uses a bayonet instead of the normal treads. So this is an adapter that goes from uh, Hasselblad bayonet 50 to uh, normal 62mm treads. Uh, so it's a great little way of doing it. I also have one for the base 60. So my 50mm for Hasselblad uses base 60 and the other two lenses uses uh, Bay 50. I don't have any grad and these. Uh, I kind of want that, but um, then I have to replace the filter system. Uh, and uh, once again, I can't really motivate the cost and I don't miss them as much uh, to motivate myself to getting that, but uh, perhaps sometime in the future. And that's it for the main compartment. Uh, Moving on, some other things I'm carrying. Um, this bag has fairly beefy shoulder straps. On one of those, I have the Peak Design uh, capture thing. Don't use it as much as uh, before, but it's still uh, on the bag and I still carry the camera there from time to time. On one of the weight straps, we have this small little pocket. And in that, I do have my vlogging camera. Uh, and this is a DJI Pocket 2. And I also have one little Gorilla Pod made by Yobi. Uh, Great for vlogging has a small little gimbal on it, uh, records in 4K, fairly good video actually. Uh, so I use that for uh, like just talking to the camera. 
Uh, I have that every do it everything handle thing on it. Uh, surprisingly good uh, microphones in this. I usually don't need to use the lav mic when I'm using this camera. Uh, this little Gorilla part is great if you want to set up the camera, take some B footage and, and stuff like that. It also has like magnetic field uh, feet, so you can mount it on a car when it's sta stationary. You don't drive with it though. So that kind of lives in that uh, little pocket here. Uh, so I can reach it quite easily. Uh, another little YouTube specific thing is I usually carry this tripod on the bag itself. Uh, but I have an additional tripod uh, for video, video purposes when I'm doing YouTube and that's a Manfrotto B3 aluminum tripod. If I ever need to mount both tripods on the bag, I can actually do that. Uh, what I usually end up doing is moving the water bottle and carrying one tripod on either side to help with white distribution. Can also mount the tripod on the front here. I don't usually do that. Um, on top we have a small little compartment uh, and here I do have a small little sitting pad. That's a cheap, I think I got it from a gas station or something. In bright orange, quite ni nice if I ever need to si signal if I get stuck or something. Uh, some tissues. Quite important thing I carry uh, a head torch always in the bag if I ever get caught out in the dark I do have a head torch so I can find myself back if I know I'm going to stay out after sunset or before sunrise I usually pack a normal torch as well this is great and it has a red light which is quite nice not to ruin your night vision uh, muesli bar always nice to have some snacks Small little bag containing various small things. I usually have an Allen wrench, uh, the DJI mic for the Pocket 2, some adapters and whatnot. Small little pouch there. Um, some gloves. Uh, I do li live in Sweden uh, and uh, it's quite important to have a couple of proper gloves. Uh, these aren't super warm, these are for when it's just around zero degrees Celsius or thereabout. Uh, made by Hesta, uh, they have these like pre brent fingers uh, and that makes it quite easy to uh, handle the camera even with the gloves on. So uh, I keep using those uh, I've been quite happy with those gloves. I do have a, a pair of thicker gloves as well for when it gets really cold. Uh, small little uh, tripod stand for the DA pocket, hardly ever use it but it's there. Also have a small compass um, just in case. And that's what's in the main, the, the top compartment. There is a secondary top compartment uh, below the lid, uh, so above the insert uh, that you can access from here. I don't use that as much, but sometimes I put a jumper or something in there. Uh, moving on, we have a small compartment on front as well, various knickknacks. I uh, carry a small little rain poncho there. If I ever get out caught in the rain when I don't pack my waterproofs, I do have a little backup rain poncho. I use a uh, Zoom field recorder F2, uh, currently recording my voice, and it takes your normal AAA battery, so I have some backups for that. And that's everything in that front compartment, I think. Then we have probably the best compartment of them all in this bag. Uh, one of the main reasons why I bought this particular bag. It has this really big front compartment. Uh, that you can access. And this extends quite a bit, so you can actually pack quite a bit of extra gear here. Uh, currently I have the rain cover for the bag there. I have some extra socks, thinner and thicker socks. Welcome to north of Europe. I also usually pack this. This is a like insulated mid-layer jacket, a down jacket. Great when it uh, gets cold and you need to add some insulation out in the field. Packs down fairly small. Made by Revolution Race, a Swedish brand. Uh, considering its price point, it's uh, quite great. I do prefer Fjellraven and Lundhawks, but uh, Evolution Race is slightly cheaper and for the down jacket I bought it from there. 
Uh, I also currently have here a small little mic, uh, like a shotgun mic. I do think yeah, there's a small little adapter, a small little stand for it to mount to the camera. Uh, use this for ambient sound and as a backup mic when, if I lose this or something happens to this mic. Use the ton on the H1, but I must say the mic on the H2 is uh, so great that I hardly need to use this for ambient sound anymore. And, uh, but it's still fairly small and it uh, has its spot in my bag. I do have a couple of photography adventures planned for the year to come. And this is the gear I'll be using. I do hope to see you in future videos. Until then, do take care and bye for now.